Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about pixel sorting slash shifting. All right guys, this week we're talking about a pixel sorting pixel shift. And it looks like this. Uh, this is built similarly to our original pixel sorting tutorial. I'll leave that one in the description below. And there will be a download for this project file. So every one of our test examples is basically set up in the same fashion. So we have this locations layer, and it has a ton of displacement maps on it. All of them have just vertical displacement set up, and this is just linked to the slider right up here. So every one of them has the same displacement amount. In this case, we're going to a maximum of eight. So it's from zero to eight, and then back down. This follows somewhat with the movement of the background. So in that locations layer, we just have the two images that we have edge to edge, and they just slide up. So then the mat that I'm using is based off of that locations layer as well. So that any movement that this does, the pixels that are shifted away, will also keep up with the movement of the layer itself. In this case, some of our keyed effects actually follow the same movement as the layer. So we're using like directional blur here, so the blur length goes at the maximum at the middle as well. So this is just set up pretty simply. I'm using a mosaic here, just to kind of make it more blocky. Then I have a directional blur on that, which again only happens the maximum at the middle. Then I'm using a find edges just to get the edges of those things. And these can be swapped to get you a different look. If we go back here, you can see it has a little bit more lines in it. If we undo, redo, undo, redo. So let's go back into the mat. I'm going to undo that. After both of those, we have our tint. And then on top of that, I put a fractal noise layer set to rocky and soft linear. And I just played around with it until we have just a nice little mix. And they're kind of set to a gray tone so that we have areas where things will happen. And that's just to give a variance to the actual displacement. And that's it on that layer. So again, when you combine those, it looks like this. So the thing about this one is I didn't really like how you can kind of see this edge. And so I started to set up my pictures a little bit differently. So I pre-comped each one of these images and I call this just location one. And I made a comp that is taller than what I needed. And I just did a motion tile on this one with mirror edges set. So that this transition between the edges is a little bit better. But this also gives us a larger picture so that we can take two of them together and feather in their edges so that they blend together better. So I did the same thing with location two and I put them together. And you can see here when they slide, they kind of blend in. It's not perfect, but this is in the middle of the move, so it's good enough. In this comp, I'm just using feathered masks. But if I were to redo this, I'd probably use a gradient over top of it set to stencil alpha. So I could keep this middle section perfect and then start the fade here and here. That way in the final comp, they can blend them together a little bit better. But this was good enough for what I needed. So doing that and using the same original mat that I had for displacement, we get this. Which isn't much different, but you don't see that edge so much anymore. So then I decided to make another mat, and on this one I wanted to actually have the edges of the objects themselves. So I turned off mosaic and directional blur, I left on the fine edges, the tint, and the fractal noise. And that gives us this. I also pushed the displacement a little bit further. Obviously they're all very similar looks, but they are different. So of course I made another one. And in this mat I actually wanted to separate out the different levels from each other. So in this top layer I have a luma key with fractal noise and tint. And alone, it looks like this. I'm keying out the darker areas, so all the bright areas have this applied to it. But if I turn this back off, you can see the bottom is just the dark areas, and I've just tinted that. And that gets us this. I like the movement on this one a little bit better and how this kind of tends to break up a little bit better. There's a lot more lines in it, that's nice. You can go back in and add like mosaic if you want, and that'll change it up a bit. But it's kind of nice without it. That's their difference. So I'm gonna leave it that way. So then there's one more thing I thought to try, and that's actually putting an adjustment layer over top of everything, with the time displacement set to look at the background layer. I think this actually is applied to the colored version before the tint, since I don't think that sees the effects. But either way, I just wanted to slow down different areas based on their values. So you can kind of see in here how that's gonna move. And if we look at the final, it looks like this. It's just a little bit smoother than the previous one. You can change the timing of this to make it a little bit more dramatic. I haven't really gone too far and seen what it looks like. But you can kind of see it's going to get a lot more lines in it this way. Obviously this one's a lot slower to render because time displacement is pretty computationally intensive. This version makes a lot more streaks. And depending on how you set your easing, this could be very interesting when it comes back to the normal image. So it's a lot more streaky and this whole area in here doesn't kind of block in as one piece. It comes in more separated. Obviously you can take this a lot further. But the idea of taking the actual movement of the locations themselves as their own mat 
means you can make all sorts of different kind of sorting effects. You could try things like threshold or posterize or invert, maybe colorama set to all sorts of different like gradient colors. There's a lot of ways you can take this and glitch it up. You can throw grids over top of it so that parts that are skipped or that it only happens in certain blocks. Shifting where you put mosaic and all sorts of things like that actually have a dramatic effect on it. So with a lot of things I try to show you guys, this is just the beginning. As always, take it and run with it. If you come up with anything cool, hit me up on Twitter. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. All right, I am Joe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>